Uh, today's video is going to be showing how we get from or how we get to this jug from our milk cow. So we hope you enjoyed the video today. Basically what we'll do is kind of walk through every step, show you what we do, uh, especially if you're thinking about getting a homesteading cow um, and thinking about hand milking of course. So uh, it is a task, it's something you have to do every day. But again, we'll kind of get you, we'll, we'll show you what we do. So again, feed wise, we have our hay and then we have some feed. Basically a cow loves feed. So uh, for us, Elsa, our milk cow, she'll just run crazy for this feed. And, and I challenge you, if you are going to have a family milk cow or you are going to uh, milk every day, it's always good to have them a little treat or have them something they just really love. So they're used to getting hay. So what we do is give them just a little grain. This is a, a grain made local. Um, basically, just to simply give them, get them in the stanchion, make, him, make her want to uh, eat and just enjoy uh, being there and being still, to be honest with you. Because uh, that works better for me. I've tried to milk her without having anything there I mean, she does good but you know again when you're trying to milk a cow fully out for 30 or 45 minutes uh, it tends to not work as good if they're not get their mind on something else so uh, I want to show you that and then again what we do we have so since we are hidden milking we have a brush basically our brush um, when we get in the stanchion we'll go ahead and, and kind of brush her down especially her udders just to make sure we keep everything as clean as possible uh, in here you'll see we have a, a pre and post uh, dip. We'll go over that and show you what we do there. We have an iodine dip for pre-dip pre, pre, uh, pre -dip and then an apple cider wash that we've made. Then we have a post-dip. Uh, I, I venture to tell you that's probably the two most important things that you can do is uh, pre and post-dip when it comes to uh, hand milking a cow. Uh, not trying to get mastitis and also trying to make sure you keep it a healthy cow for your family uh, to take in raw milk. So again you want rags, you want to make sure you have clean rags paper towels, we use a heavier duty paper towel and again we have our apple cider vinegar that we put and mix in their feed a little bit. Uh, not every day but just every few days we'll put it in their feed and kind of make it a little little paste and they'll seem like they really enjoy it. So, Plus we believe in telling this the cow for apple cider vinegar. Uh, two things we do, we have our big milk jug. As you notice this is a tall jug and you'll see it's going to sit basically four or five inches right under her. Uh, we believe that if you are hand milking, you, you don't need to have just a pail underneath it because you're exposing that pail to a lot more uh, if it's hair or, or things floating in the air or dust or if she kicks. There's just so much more that uh, could get in your, your milk. So we, we have a very tight, big bucket. We will never use that whole bucket, but we'll show you the process of how we do it because we, we, we fill it up to a point and then dump. Fill it up to a point and dump. So therefore, that's why we always take a, a big jug out there. So when you're milking, a cow is going to move, a cow is going to, you know, maybe adjust her feet and kick a little bit, and that's okay. But when you have a tall bucket that she can't get her foot in or hoof in, and you have a tall bucket that, that a lot of times is not exposed to elements such as uh, when she's standing there, um, simply, you know, kicking and moving, and hair's not just floating around in your milk. So um, that's just what we do. And then from there, once, once we, you know, maybe get maybe a quart in there, milk for about 10 minutes or so we'll come and we'll dump it in there and put a closed top on it so it allows us to know that our milk is being contained a little bit more uh, safe environment especially so well as you can see uh, it's still dark outside it's either however you want to whatever uh, quim you want to say it's either milk 30 or or uh, cow o'clock or whatever it may be but but basically every morning, the reason I'm going to show you this is every morning, uh, our stanchion, you cannot see it yet, but see all those little few little lights? Our stanchion's in that dark spot. So every morning, I come out and I have a light switch close to our house. Uh, so what I'll do is, when when I first thing I do when I open my garage and go on out with all my supplies, I go and I flip this light on. This light signifies it's time to milk. So again, what it does, it seems to make her say, hey, that's, I need to be heading that way. So she's in another field. So what we'll have to do is open that field and she'll come running, especially since I have food and feed. So uh, as you notice, I just kicked on that light. You can see, uh, it's 
kind of in that tree right now, but right over there. It's just our little statue. So again, we'll walk over there and I'll show you what it looks like. But basically, we'll we'll walk to get her. I'll show you how we uh, kind of get everything ready for the day. All right, now see you see there's a fence between our stanchion and the other side. But when I flip this light on, Elsa's on the other side trying to get to the stanchion because she knows it's, it's milk 30 or or a cow clock. So what we're going to do is uh, I will open the gate right here. We have a little catch pen, and basically we'll go and get our food in, our, our uh, hay in. We'll go and get our milk jugs in, and that way we're ready, and then we'll walk some feed down to her, and she'll walk right on around. Alright, as you see, she walked right on in. The thing about a cow is they like repetition. Every morning we do the same thing. I don't know if you can hear it. But I keep music playing in the background. Uh, I like music and things like she likes music. So therefore, we listen to music. Uh, so you know, that's us. Doesn't mean that you've got to do it. But it, I've always heard that cows like uh, repetition. Cows like things going the same every day. So we keep everything going the exact same. All right, clean rag, spray, clean rag. Pre dip. Normally I have my, I've already brushed her, but normally I have another thing of hot water just in case if it's been nasty outside, um, we will have something for her on that too. So, uh, some hot water, but in this case it's actually been a pretty few days, so we haven't had it. So, I'm just going to do a dry, wa dry uh, rub first to make sure her bag is clean. Alright, so. We mix up our own wash. Basically, all it is is apple cider vinegar, a little tea tree oil, and then um, some lemon too. Again, the whole purpose is just to keep uh, as healthy as possible. So this is what we do for our wash. Again, getting her udders real good. You can tell she's been clean. She stays clean. That's what's what's good about a good post deal. Having a very good post dip because then the next day makes it a whole lot easier. So, so again, fully clean. Brag just has some orange from the post dip. I'm going to use our iodine solution. Do a, just a, a good little pre dip. Just another little antiseptic. Precaution is a whole lot better than treatment. So, if you can. Make sure you are taking care of your cow very well. Don't skip any steps because ultimately prevention is so much better than treatment. All right, you see, I wiped that off, wiped off the iodine. No dirt really on her. I'm going to go back through and wipe off again because you want her dry. Alright, she is dry, clean, and ready for meal. Now, bacteria could easily be stored in a cow. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to kind of get her a little bit closer. So I move her. Good job, Elsa. So basically, you always want to do pre-squares. Just on the ground, or if you have a cup, you just want to check for mastitis. Make sure there's no clogs in her ducts of her udders. No problem. All four chambers seem to be very strong. So, we should be good to go there, so just a good push out. Alright, got that set. She knows how to stand. I kind of put the bucket there. And I know her back chambers are a lot heavier than her front chambers, so I'm going to start on them first because that seems like it benefits her more. And pretty much her back chambers I will milk the whole time. And you'll learn your milk cow. Um, there's characteristics she does. And, the way she blows and maybe the way she flips her tail at me, I kind of know she's either going to readjust or she's going to use the restroom or uh, she needs to be moved or she, she likes to change her position because she don't like her foot, her right foot, her back foot back there. It'll get kind of in the ground where this hay is and she don't like that. So after a while she'll just kind of shake it off and adjust. So I kind of watch. 
Now, as you, I was talking to you about this big bucket. I don't know if you can see it good, but you see there's only about three to four inches right there between me and the bucket and her udders. The good thing about that is it keeps less exposure. So if she kicks this bucket because it's not low, like a true milk bucket is going to be a lot lower than this big old bucket. But it just tends to make sure she's close to this. It keeps all the elements from any hair she has on her body. Also, if she uses the restroom, if she kicks, it just keeps it where it's closer to me. And again, keeps the bucket really close to where there's not a lot of openness uh, for my milk. Because again, we do drink raw milk. So we make sure that we have... Uh, the best quality milk that we can. Thing about uh, milking, make sure you're not squeezing her too hard. You just want to not pinch, but you just want to put your your thumb and your other hands basically around, and you just want to barely push. And basically, you just take it from the top and push close to the end, and it squirts right out. Now, as you notice, it's not it's, it is cold out here. But it's not too cold. But if you notice, I got a, a microfiber or a fleece jacket on. The reason I do that is because, again, as I'm rubbing against her, like any other animal, they shed. But if if you notice, a lot of times people don't want to wear jackets that attract hair and things like that. But when I'm milking, I wear a, a long sleeve fleece every day. And the reason is, it just allows, if there's hair floating around, especially off her udder bag or off her hair right here, off her stomach, it's going to get on me and not in my milk. I rarely ever have hair in my milk because of brushing and because of wearing a microfiber or either a fleece. Uh, not something you have to do, a lot of people don't do that of course, but again it just tends to be a little bit better for us. And I want to show you this too, so as you notice we have a V stanchion, but to be honest with you I don't even close your head in it. And again it's all about comfort for your cow. Um, our cow tend, tends to do better if I don't close her head in, a, in that stanchion. Now I can close it in and lock her in, but that to me she pulls because she feels constricted. So she'll pull against it several times, which makes it a little bit harder for me because she moves her legs. So what I found out is that I'll put her food bucket under there, leave the V open. So if she needs to adjust, she can. She doesn't feel constricted. She's more comfortable. So therefore she doesn't move as much on me. Now I have a chain right behind her, so she can only move so so much anyway. But again, it helps her adjust, change her stance if she needs to. Um, if you notice when I when I got her in, I pulled her close to me. Um, sometimes she'll adjust, and I'll have to move her again. But uh, I kind of just fit to her. However she stands, I try to fit to her, so that way she feels more comfortable. When she feels more comfortable, I actually get more meal. So again, we've got about a quart, quart and a half in this big bucket. Now this is a, like a five or six gallon bucket. Again, we dump every, you know, 10 or 15 minutes because ultimately if she decides to kick or we decide if it dumps over or she decides to use the restroom, uh, we won't lose all our milk. So instead of milking her out in this whole bucket and having two gallons in here and all of a sudden she kicks it over or all of a sudden she adjusts and, and we knock it over or there's hair gets in it or our feces gets in it we've wasted a whole day of milking so basically what we'll do is just a second I'll uh, just take the bucket dump it in our other bucket in a closed um, glass jar and then start again so therefore if she kicks it over I haven't lost but about a quart of my two gallons um, so again that's just what we do uh, I've seen people milk all the way in an open bucket two to three gallons and more power to them but I know I lost all my milk after milk in 40 minutes. My hands are hurting. The last thing I want to do is get, lose all my milk every morning. You know, again, I'm up at 4 o'clock getting ready for this. So if you, if you spend two and a half hours prepping and milking, and all of a sudden you get no benefit for it, that's a little hard to keep doing every day. So I know you can't see me in this video, but I just want you all to kind of see what we do again. Remember with cows, it's all about stanchion training too. Teaching her, she, you're the boss, however you respect her. So basically, get your cow in your stanchion, even if she's not ready to milk. Say she's still a heifer, say she's bred and she ain't calfed yet. You need to start teaching her so you can break her into the stanchion. So um, with, with Elsa, we really didn't have that option. We bought her and she was already milking. So it took us three hours, I don't know if you've watched our first video of her, but uh, 
it took us three hours just to get her in the stanchion. Well, that's not good because it put a lot of stress and strain on her. She kicked me like six times that morning. The milk, I mean, it, don't get wrong, it was drinkable. But, uh, I mean, it, it was us fighting, trying to keep hair out of it and everything else. So, uh, we had a little, hand, uh, a little milking machine that didn't work that morning. So, it was just crazy. So, if you can prep a little bit better when you have your cow or you're planning on getting your cow or you've got a bred cow and she's training, go ahead and break her. Go ahead and get her in the stanchion. Let her understand that's where she eats. That's where she, uh, that's where we, we have a time every morning, milk 30, where we can come in here and say, okay, we're going to eat here. I'm going to rub you down. I'm going to milk you. I'm going to uh, be touching you all here. So again, teach that cow already because it will make it a whole lot easier on you when actually it's time to milk. Now, like I said, I'm not, a cow's a cow. So um, Elsa may kick me. She may kick the bucket. But that's very uncommon now because, again, we've been doing this over and over and over. She knows what I'm going to do. She knows how I'm going to pull on her udders. She knows how I'm going to milk her. So, therefore, she's kind of learned me and I've learned her. So, again, the more you do it, the better it's going to be for you. Another reason with the high bucket, cows move their tails a lot. Well, their tails are not the, na uh, are not the cleanest thing. They're pretty nasty. Uh, or ours is anyway. Um, so again, her tail sits right there. If it gets close to a lower bucket or so, you, you know, you take her tail and just throw it around her leg. Now, if a cow's in good mood to me, they kind of throw their tail around a little bit. Well, if you've got this full, build, uh, full milk in this bucket, and all of a sudden her tail comes and lands in it, um, I don't think I want to drink that. So therefore, again, high bucket's good. Uh, making sure you know where her tail is is good. And dumping milk. Uh, periodically is good so again the reason we do what we do hopefully that helps we watch her food we want to make sure her food stays with enough food in her buckets so she won't move too much so I don't check it every once in a while too again keep my rags right here just in case uh, she uses restroom or I accidentally put my hand down for something uh, again my goal is not only is she clean but I'm clean um, I'll wash my hands and then again I use the same apple cider vinegar uh, mixture that we use here too on my hands before I start even touching her and milking her because again I want to make sure she knows or I, I know I'm clean too. I'm going to show you the Anguses. They sit here and wait. Usually they're, they're not as quiet but since I'm, uh, since I'm talking a lot I guess they don't feel like they need to talk but Beauty lets me have it and Sizzle does too so they're waiting patiently. They know when she eats theirs is coming. So again, just did my second dump. As you see, I'm about three-fourths of a gallon full over there. Um, that's a three-and-a-half gallon bucket, so I know if I get to the first line, I'm, I'm right here at a gallon. And I'm, I'm right there at it, so. More. Uh, the more you try to milk her out, the more milk production she'll do. So um, if you feel like your cow is close to being milked out, go ahead and just kind of do it a little bit longer. Because again, then her body will know, hey, we may need a little bit more milk for tomorrow. Uh, always remember, the more milk you want, you need to milk her out. But also, grain or heavy, heavy proteins and grasses, good nutrients. The more she eats, the more she's going to milk out for you. If you got your cow on a very strict diet and she's not eating a lot of grazing grass or either forage, hay, or either some grain at some point, don't expect to get a lot of milk. Words of wisdom. Um, I'm definitely not an experienced milk cow <laughs> specialist. But one thing I've learned, the more the cow feels comfortable with you, the better she's going to be. So every morning, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to rub her down. I'm going to talk to her, talk sweet to her. <laughs> and then milk her. And then at the very end, once I post it, because I want her to stand here a little bit, so that way I know her udders are closed back up or her teeth are closed back up on her udders. I'm going to brush her again, say sweet nothings in her ear, let her eat a little bit more so she knows I appreciate what she's done. Uh, when you own a family milk cow, it's not like a dairy barn. She's not just a number. She's a, a part of the family. So you want to make sure that she knows that she's a part of the family. Even me now. See, she'll adjust. She's just adjusting a little bit. We'll let her adjust. See how she moves that back leg, she gets mad stuck in there. See how she kicks, 
Not kicking at me, but just trying to adjust herself. So let her adjust. Now if you go and get mad at her and you start kind of hitting her, making sure you try to keep her in the same spot she was, you're going to make her uncomfortable. Let her adjust and you get used to her adjustment. Now if it's impossible and she's kind of where she, you can't milk certain chambers, then you try to adjust her. But let her adjust herself. But back to my point of making sure she understands that she's part of the family, uh, the more comfort that she has, the better. Uh, me, I could go on the field and because she knows me a little bit more than she knows my wife or my kids because I'm milking her every day, she's going to tend to come to me for feed or she's going to tend to come to me just to, to, to check me out and be nosy. And that's what I want. Ultimately, that's, that's the relationship you build with your cow. So, pretty full bucket there. I mean, you're talking probably a little over a gallon and a half this morning. She's still eating. So what I'm going to do is, and you can see she's kind of getting restless. So I'm going to go ahead and post dip her. Again, to me, I would say post dipping is one of the best, if not the most preventative way from mastitis and other diseases. Alright, fill your cup up. Get a good dip on every teat. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just stay here just for a second. I'm done milking, so I'm just going to kind of rub her, pat her a little bit to get on her. Now, you see how, how much hair still comes off there. That's what's so important about making sure your milk is closed up the best it can. And then also that you're wearing this microfiber. See how much, hold if you can see, there's hair all over that jacket. And that's that's a good thing because ultimately that means it didn't get in my milk. So when I strain it, I'll show you me straining and I'll show you exactly what comes out of it so you can be prepared. But um, I have a little strainer inside and that's the only thing we do. We filter it, put it straight in the refrigerator. And I'm just going to pet her, let her know that she did a good job this morning. And that also allows her post dip to stay on her. She's not moving. She's not rubbing it against her leg. It gives it time just to really set up. Um, I've always heard that her udders, her end of her udders, her, her teats can stay open for 30 minutes to an hour after. So again, by you putting that post dip on there, it keeps her uh, to where she won't get mastitis and won't, if she does choose to lay down, um, it, won't, it won't affect her. So. What I'll do is um, she'll go straight to her water, and then I'll put out more hay. So then that way it gives she has a reason to keep standing up. So, all right, guys, this is kind of a part two after we showed you how to milk. This is a, a video showing kind of what we do with our raw milk and and straining and why we drink raw milk uh, versus uh, drinking homogenized or pasteurized milk. Um, now, <clears throat> that being said, I know a lot of people have a crazy debate about this, and uh, everybody has their own opinion. Um, would I just drink anybody's raw milk? Probably not. Uh, would I drink my raw milk? Absolutely. Uh, homogenized and pasteurized milk just take out a lot of the, the good bacteria that, that milk has. Uh, what we've researched has found that a lot of the milk that we buy from stores and things like that uh, is so processed, some of the, the benefits of milk uh, is not in there anymore. Uh, now that being said, is raw milk for everybody? That's for you to decide. Uh, for us, it is. We, we drink raw milk. We don't pasteurize it, get a, pasteurize it at all. Uh, now, that being said, I know my cow is in a great environment. I know what she eats. I know that she's taken care of because I'm doing it daily. Uh, I know um, what, if she is ill or if she is sick or she's got some kind of issue going on, I can, I can kind of see that in the way she acts. Uh, I can see that she's putting off uh, a great digestive system. So that's why I know I will drink my raw milk and it's safe for my uh, children and my wife. Now, like I said before, it's raw milk for everybody. I, I don't know that's for you to decide. However, I do know that um, if you're taking great care of your cow um, and you know that she's not sick, you know that she, you're, you're doing all that you can to have a clean environment for your milk and for your cow, then uh, I think it's the best for you. It's the best milk, hands down, taste-wise, but also it has a lot of benefits. Um, 
not saying that there's not bad bacteria, but there's good bacteria in it for our body. So, uh, you know, this is what our grandfathers and great grandfathers and great great grandfathers have been raised off of for years and years and years. Why all of a sudden do we think that we need to do more to it because it did bad for them? So, uh, I think that's uh, that's something that you have to decide for yourself. So, anyways. Uh, off my soapbox. You know, this is the milk uh, that we had from out there. We go from a stainless steel bucket that we're milking in, pour it in here for a closed system so that way basically it's always taken care of, uh, less contaminant for sure. So what we do is take the same bucket that's in our sink right now, put a strainer in it, a colander in it. And this is how you can check for mastitis again. So you can get all impurities out of milk. We pour right into the strainer and it's got a little Tiny, 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 minuscule strain that's going to catch every impurity in this milk. Again, it's all about cleanliness, so now what we'll do is scrub this, the stainless steel bucket that we milk it to, in this glass. We will scrub it heavy because it does have raw milk in it and it is warm. So I'll show you this. Um, now, As you see, there's nothing that's come out of that milk. No hair, because the way we do our clothes system. No chunks of anything like mastitis, nothing at all. So for us, we believe this milk is the best quality milk for you. Again, I know everybody has an opinion. I'm not saying you're wrong or right by doing store-bought milk or organic milk from the store or drinking raw milk or pasteurizing your milk. Uh, for us, pasteurization, um, not that it's bad, uh, but if you're you're a homesteader, you already got so many chores, the last thing I'm gonna do is, is now take another hour or so to put it in a pasteurizer uh, and try to burn off whatever back, bacteria that's in there and then put it in the refrigerator. Uh, I personally don't have time for that. Not saying it's not good or bad for you, but that's just, that's just our choice. So um, I hope that through these two videos, you've learned some things that can help be a better milker for you, um, especially from the mistakes of being kicked so many times and also uh, straining your milk is very important. Now what we'll do is take this and put this straight into the refrigerator and let it get ice cold. And at that point, we can either pull the, the butter fat off of it or leave it in there and pour it in smaller jars to, to actual drink. So I uh, hope you have enjoyed this video. Happy homesteading, y'all.